Hey guys, in this video we're going to continue the Cubase 12 tutorial series by going over automation tools and how to use automation with a MIDI controller using hardware sliders, buttons, and faders in our digital audio workstation. We'll be starting with a project with multiple different tracks, instruments, and effects already applied, so make sure to check out the rest of this video series if you haven't yet to make sure you're all caught up and have similar options in your project. We've also already set up this MIDI controller to work as a control surface in our project, so if you're looking to do that, check out the previous video first. Automation is a tool that allows us to program changes and controls within the digital audio workstation tracks and effects, that way they are applied automatically and in the same way each time, and can even be exported with the song. An example of how we could use automation would be to adjust the level of a guitar so that it's louder or quieter in a chorus or verse, particularly if we have different instruments playing in those parts. We can also use it for controlling things like panning or adjusting the controls inside an effect. Although there are many different controls for automation, we will use panning, volume, and mute in this video as it will be easier to hear the changes for this demonstration, and the basic programming in Cubase 12 will be the same. To start with automation, let's first go over how to view the lanes. From the main project zone view, right click on a track and select show automation. Now we can see the default automation lane for volume, but we can change it to be different parameters that can be controlled. We have a few basic controls in our automation lanes. The R is for read automation. This tells the software to use the automation that's written on that lane. Without this enabled, the automation will just be ignored. Next is write, which is used to adjust the automation based on our MIDI controller. The drop down in the middle sets what the automation lane controls, and we can select more to see more controls that can be adjusted. To the right is the value that the control is set to. The mute and lock buttons apply to this specific automation lane we're working on, so we can choose to mute the volume from affecting the track, while leaving read mode on to be able to play back automation for another control such as panning. Similarly, we can lock the volume from writing while still being able to write to the pan control. With the automation lane activated, we can use the draw tool or the line tool to adjust the level of the track by adding points of different level along it. We can also use the select tool to change and drag the transition between the two points, or change the type of the curve. On and off controls work the same, except you have a point at the top or bottom and no transition. This is added in with the draw tool for muting the track. Those are the basics of writing automation manually. If you take your time with it, you can get some complex changes done on each of these automation lanes for all your tracks. Now we want to cover writing automation. This can be done by clicking and dragging or pressing buttons on a mix console, channel, or insert, or by changing the control setting on a MIDI controller. To do this first though, the MIDI controller would have to be set up in the MIDI remote menu and assigned to different controls in Cubase 12, like we covered in the last video. To record automation, all we have to do is set the track to automation write mode and start moving controls or pressing buttons while the project is playing, but it does not have to be in record mode. The only thing left to know about are the three automation write modes in Cubase 12. These are found in the top panel in the drop down and the default is touch. If it's not showing up, make sure to use the gear in the top right and select show automation mode. The automation mode just basically changes the way the automation is recorded. Basically, the default is touch mode. Automation won't record on any tracks until a control is changed when there's automation right enabled and that track doesn't have the automation lane locked. If write isn't enabled, then no tracks will record automation. We can record on some tracks and not others by locking the individual automation lanes, such as for the volume on track 1, so that everything else can record automation, but when we touch that control, it won't write anything. 
In touch mode, the automation starts writing to the track while we're making a change or holding down that mouse key on the control. Once we release it, it transitions back to the previous value within a set amount of time. This can be a little bit problematic for a MIDI controller because it's not constantly sending a signal when we let go, so it doesn't know how long we're touching the control surface unless it's still moving, but it will work if we're using a mouse and holding down the click button. If we want to go to automation mode settings with the E button at the top, we can see the automation modes and get settings for the second tab where we can set the return time for touch mode. Auto latch mode works a little differently than the touch mode. When we release a control in auto latch mode, it stays at that level until playback stops without jumping back to baseline. If we stop playback though, and the level after that point where recording automation is different, it will transition back to that value after the point the recording automation stops based on the return time. If the return time is short, it will more or less immediately snap back. Since auto latch holds our position, this is a good option for using a MIDI controller because we don't have to keep changing the setting and it will stay where we left it after the controller stops instead of jumping back to the old value that we were trying to overwrite. The last automation mode is crossover. The crossover mode is designed to overwrite a small section that we didn't like on a previous automation take. It uses a two-touch method. On the first touch, we activate the automation and bring it to a new value, such as decreasing the volume. On the second touch, we bring the automation back towards the starting value that we were at. When we release it and it crosses the starting value, it will automatically stop right automation instead of continuing like the auto latch mode does. When we're using a control surface, all we have to do is configure it to control the parameter that we want, like we did from the MIDI remote controller in the last video. I have mine set so the knobs control the panning, faders control the volume, and buttons control muting. Now we just have to set the tracks that we want automation on to write mode, and we can write automation directly from the MIDI controller during playback. Sometimes you won't want to do this though, as you may want to just use the MIDI controller to mix certain levels throughout the track, so in that case you can do the same thing but with the right mode turned off. Thanks for checking out this video on automation and MIDI controllers in Cubase 12. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications whenever a new video is released. You can also check the video description for products featured in this video and social media links to see all our new content.